It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Earlier this month, Ecuador's recently elected president, Lenin Moreno, decided to strip his vice president, Jorge Glass, who belongs to the same political party, of all his duties, except for the pre vice presidency itself. The move was the culmination of an intensifying feud between former President Rafael Correa and President Moreno. If you recall, Correa campaigned heavily to have Moreno elected as his successor. But now a political rift has developed between the two. Here's a clip of what the past president, uh, President Correa, had to say this weekend about all of this controversy regarding the vice president, Jorge Glass. They should show not what the corrupt ones are saying of Petro Ecuador and Odebrecht, because this Mr. Santos of Odebrecht and Correa, in this case, they are corrupt, who are slinging mud with a fan. They should show with evidence whether we have given away even 20 cents. If not, then we need to defend our vice president with all our soul. They want to smash our vice president, an honest man, an innocent man. I don't care about the politics. What I care about are my principles, and I'll defend a good man and an innocent man. Joining us to make sense of this falling out between the current and former president of Ecuador is Gregory Wilpert. Gregory is a Real News correspondent, normally based in Quito, Ecuador, but, jo but joins us today from Caracas, Venezuela. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Thank you. Greg, so give us a brief summary of what is this ongoing conflict between Moreno and Correa that has become a significant political issue in uh, Ecuador. Yeah, it started actually fairly shortly after the election uh, completed, which was you know back in April, and uh, simmered all along. There had been a lot of suspicion about whether the vice president, who was vice president under Correa as well, and now is vice president under uh, Moreno, whether he was involved in some kind of corruption scandal. Uh, from the beginning, there had been a lot of rumors and accusations, especially from the opposition, and uh, both Correa and Moreno had actually ignored those accusations, but. Uh, recently, uh, for various reasons, uh, one of them being that uh, that a newspaper uh, published a transcript uh, and a recording of uh, where Odebrecht, uh, the the big Brazilian company that has been in, uh, accused of corrupting governments throughout Latin America, where they uh, basically implicated uh, Jorge Glass, the vice president, of being involved in Ecuadorian corruption. Uh, of having received bribes basically in, in order to move certain infrastructure projects forward. And uh, so that kind of uh, was the, the detonator, I think, for, uh, or one of them, let's say, for uh, trying to re remove Jorge Glass from office. And so uh, back, uh, and then in the meantime, Glass himself fired back, saying that this is all a uh, political campaign to uh, discredit him and to discredit the legacy of President Correa, because he's an old friend of Correa's, who has uh, been very solidly supportive of Correa and Correa of him. And and um, that it's an effort to move the government in the right wing or rightward direction. Uh, and so uh, he wrote a letter, basically a public open letter, back on August 2nd, and then August uh, criticizing Moreno. And then on August 3rd, Moreno removed him from all the positions that his various committees and uh, official duties that uh, Glass had, uh, which means that he's uh, right now only vice president with absolutely no duties whatsoever, not even a security detail. And um, so that's that's basically what it's uh, amounted to at the moment, uh, and and uh, it's 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 this kind of uh, uh, strange overlap of corruption issues and what the political direction of of the Moreno government. Right, and from Moreno's point of view, given the scandalous political crisis that Brazil is in, and Predator Brass's involvement in Odebrecht and. Uh, uh, all of the turmoil there, you can see he is probably hyper uh, alert about protecting his administration from these kinds of allegations. Uh, how serious would you say these charges against Vice President Glass is, and is there any evidence? 
Well, as we saw in the clip earlier, I mean, one of the things that, uh, one of the points that Korea is making is that all of the evidence against Glass is really coming from uh, the people who, who are themselves concretely involved in corruption and therefore cannot be trusted or who have been accused. And this is basically uh, the, the company Odebrecht itself. Uh, and uh, Glass is saying that, well, uh, they're holding. Uh, that is Odebrecht is holding Glass responsible for having kicked Odebrecht out of Ecuador, that that was his decision and it was because of their involvement in corruption and now they're seeking revenge on him by trying to get him involved. And uh, so far, other than this uh, supposed recording where, uh, where one uh, Odebrecht official mentions Glass as receiving bribes, uh, it's nothing concrete. It could have been, you know, staged. We don't know. There's nothing concrete really against Glass as far as I can tell. Um, and then the other accusation comes from this former director of the oil company where it's a similar situation where he says that Glass knew about uh, the corruption that uh, was uh, in the oil company, uh, but he also doesn't offer for any documentation. There's no bank accounts, nothing uh, showing that he received any payments of any kind. So it's, uh, it's still really uh, on the level of uh, accu accusations and uh, hearsay than anything uh, really documented. Uh, and so I would say one has to believe that the person is innocent until proven guilty. Right. And Greg, what was Glass's role in the uh, previous uh, uh, administration? Well, he took on many different uh, tasks. I mean, um, one of the, uh, first of all, he was a minister uh, for uh, for the oil industry, uh, and uh, so that was very important. He was uh, also in charge of various infrastructure projects, uh, construction projects, and uh, including the, one of the major dams in in Ecuador. Uh, and so he had a very crucial uh, role in that sense. And of course, uh, he should have perhaps. I mean, that's the most one could say at this point, pretty much for certain. I mean, there was corruption. Whether he benefited from it, we don't know, but he should have known about it because he was, uh, you know, at the head of uh, these major companies and these major uh, ministries. Uh, so uh, at that's uh, that's the main thing that seems to be definite is that uh, that he shouldn't have been ignorant of these kinds of things going on right uh, right under his eyes or right under his responsibility. Um, so yeah, so that, that's really the the main thing uh, that that one can accuse him of, I think. Right. And uh, what seems to be developing here is really a, a political difference and also these corruption charges. Give us a sense of what the political rifts that are developing between Moreno and Correa and his legacy and what Moreno might be trying to undo about Correa's legacy. Yeah, I think that's really key to understand the political context in which this is happening because uh, originally Moreno was campaigning on uh, continuing the, uh, the the policies of the Korea government as being a you know, a progressive, social democratic, essentially, uh, type of government. And he promised also to even expand some of the social programs. Um, and uh, so, it, so in that sense, it's kind of surprising that there's a shift. But uh, at the same time that this corruption scandal was uh, evolving, uh, Moreno was starting to distance himself from uh, from Korea and uh, from, from his legacy. And one of the main issues really became this whole issue about, well, how indebted is, is uh, Ecuador? And uh, one of the things that Moreno kept saying is that actually uh, Korea was really irresponsible. He started attacking him pretty strongly, uh, saying that the country is over 40 percent in debt and that's illegal according to uh, Ecuadorian law because uh, there's a debt limit on 40 percent of GDP that uh, and Korea shot back, of course. Uh, as a matter of fact, in this uh, Facebook video, the more extended version, uh, he talks about how this is really ridiculous and he provides a lot of statistics saying that, you know, actually Ecuador is only 30 percent of GDP in debt, not 40 percent, and that this is just a way of moving the country to the, towards the right. Uh, and uh, there's some evidence for that, that that's what's, uh, what Moreno's trying to do because he appointed several ministers from the opposition to uh, be in his cabinet and uh, this argument about uh, extra heavy debt seems to be an argument to uh, cut back on social spending really. Right. And uh, Moreno was Correa's vice president, uh, so he knows the role of the vice president uh, rather well. So removing him from all these duties uh, is rather significant. What will happen next? Because here you have a cabinet who's shifting right. 
Um, and uh, Glasses, obviously, even if he's not involved in the corruption uh, charges, would be more inclined to um, carry out or protect the legacy of uh, Korea here. Yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult situation in some sense, especially for the party Alianza País, which is the one that Correa created and that Moreno is you know, now nominally the head of. And the party has been trying to mediate between the two, form, uh, to the current president and the former president, uh, trying to maintain it, but it could head towards a split. That is, if there's a real rupture, um, it could mean a, a division, a left-right division, really, uh, within the Alianza País party, which is the largest party in Ecuador at the moment. And, and that would certainly be uh, a weakening for Moreno. On the other hand, Moreno is enjoying tremendous popularity at the moment. Uh, uh, polls from middle of July said he had 70 percent popularity. Actually, I just saw another poll that said uh, in early August it had reached 78 uh, percent. So he's being enormously, so that gives him a lot of clout, really. Um, but of course, it's not going to be worth too much if he doesn't have a political party to back him. So the big question is whether the party will split and whether Moreno will continue moving towards the right, which would be, uh, which are some of the indicators. Well, another indicator of this actually is, uh, for example, he uh, issued a very uh, harsh criticism, actually, of Venezuela yesterday, uh, which had, uh, which really went against uh, Ecuador's foreign policy up until now, which was to solidly support uh, the government of President Maduro. And so in that sense, he seems to be aligning himself more and more uh, with the rightward trend in the continent. Uh, if you think about, you know, the rightward shift in Argentina and in Brazil, particularly, and then lining up also with Colombia and Mexico. And so that would be a, a pretty big shift uh, if, if that uh, direction continues. All right, Greg, I uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And we'll be keeping an eye on these developments. And uh, I'm sure you'll uh, be back in Quito by then, jumping from one hotbed to another political hotbed. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Greg. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.